Good morning all. It's just oh, it's just after 5.30 in the morning. I uh, stayed in the Barossa last night. We had a family gig yesterday. I didn't record anything yesterday because I thought it's going to be a boring day. Turns out I worked on my car in the car park of the family gig all day because um, I went and bought a Victron inverter. We're doing a fair bit of travel. A uh, good part of it's off grid and I wanted to see if I could get a uh, aircon system running again uh, off an inverter in my caravan and yeah turns out I can there was a fair bit of stuffing around uh, I ended up uh, putting an extra lithium battery into my caravan I'll save you the whole rigmarole of the day but the end result was yeah Victron 2000 kilowatt Phoenix inverter hooked up to a lithium battery which then hooks up to my lithium start battery um, in the car and with all the solar and charging and everything it ran for probably five hours um right through the evening last night and then we just ran the inverter all night and ran fans inside so the inverter looks like it's a ripper anyway we're gonna hit the road uh next uh we're meeting up just outside of peterborough with another couple of patrols one of them you'll definitely know dirty 62 he's done a lot of work for this trip too so i'm keen to see his car and what it's turned into let's go all the kids going in to get some food. Bacon egg rolls, yeah, yeah. But I'm just doing a bit of a nut check. Not a nut check, a nut check. Because new wheels and tires have only been on the car a few hundred K. So my thing is I'm gonna leave a 19 mil socket on my breaker bar and I'm gonna put it right here. And that's gonna be a little reminder for me every day to check my nuts. So I thought I'd sit in the back of the car to see what the experience is like and yeah, it drones a lot. So I'm going to work out a different exhaust when I get back. This is like it's just full on. We've got a lot of Ks to do. On an up note though, check out TIL Life. So you can plug HDMI in here, USB in here for charging, headphones wired or wireless. And then you can mirror the screen here and here. <laughs> that's one happy little girl. But like, that's that's really cool. Um, and it's going to make this trip a lot quieter. gets a second car. Sharon has to repeat all of that in order and do the next letter. It's 
one way to kill a lot of time. Excuse the wind, about to do something that many South Australians are scared to do. I'm gonna jump over, I'll do it. Oh, I'm gonna answer a million questions every time I try and get back. Ugh. COVID can piss off really. South Wales. We ever tried to come back? We're going to answer a million questions. <laughs> we are in New South Wales and with all the excitement of COVID, that's probably the wrong word to use, I expected there to be like police on the border and we'd have to fill in forms or do something at the border, but there was nothing. We thought, well, maybe like it's 20 k's over the border to try and you know catch those people, but nothing. We just drove straight over the border, nothing either way. So people from New South Wales can come into South Australia and vice versa without any questions at all or logging it. I thought that was kind of weird to be honest. We're just coming into Mount Gambier, uh, Mount Gambier. we're just coming into Broken Hill. That's just in front of us. I don't know if there's gonna be something in Broken Hill maybe. Anyway, making good time, we're just going to fill up with fuel and got a bit of a tailwind, so I'm just going to keep on going. For the Y62 owners out there, when you look at your fuel usage on the dash, have you ever noticed that like it doesn't go up in like 0.1 steps? There's always these like weird, it's like 14.6 and then 15.3 and then and as it goes up, it's not like a linear step. I had every intention of stopping at Wilcania, but um, <laughs> by the time I found somewhere to stop, I'd driven through the whole place. Wasn't much to it, so we just stopped at this little rest stop. It's not much, I'll show you around. There's all broken beer bottles on the floor everywhere. But it's funny, this town, the last week, I've been saying to people that we're driving through here, and three of them have given me these kind of creepy stories about the town. Like, no, that can't be true. And then the second one told me, I'm like, what do you, what do you mean? And then we heard on the radio, uh, on the UHF, on the way here, someone was just chatting to them. And they said, whatever you do, don't turn your car off. It will can you keep going. I'm like, that's rubbish. How could the town be that bad? Okay. Anyway, we haven't stopped. Well, besides at the rest stop. Um, we're going to keep moving on to Cobar and that's going to get us about halfway to Gold Coast so we're really cracking along here all right let's get into it again saying 39 degrees on the dash it's stinking hot we still got a few hours I think it's three o'clock or something um, yeah I'll be able to show you my whole inverter setup when we get to camp a bit later and how that's going off the lithium battery and how it all goes. So I'll give you a look at that. Engine, <laughs> really is just burning fuel because he loves to do that. Now that's how, 
these things when they start to get warm you um, keep them over 2000 rpm and that massive thermo cuts in up in Cobar in a caravan park but I did promise you guys that I'll show you the whole inverter thing so I'll do this at the end of the video first of all I'm just gonna give you a quick little tour of what I had to do before you press the on button now you have to excuse the bit of mess and mucking around here I'm gonna turn the inverter on I'm gonna turn the aircon on and then I'll walk you through it process is the battery charger um, is that black plug there turn that off otherwise it's going to try and charge a battery off the inverter and that just is counterintuitive next the fridge um you want to make sure that well ours has got auto sort of settings you want to make sure it's on gas the hot water service has to be off otherwise that will choke it as well now um essentially what i've done here is i'll explain the batteries and everything in a second i'm going to turn the inverter on that's on and this is my tong tester if you don't have one of these go and buy one because they're the best things in the world and i'm just going to put that on the inverter so yeah that's the right cable it's drawing nothing at all i'm surprised usually make sure it's the right cable let's do on that one no that's better all right it's drawing i don't know if you can see it one and a half amps on idle now aircon i'm gonna run this flat out to give you the worst case scenario uh on button this is the soft start i'm gonna uh, put it down to 16 degrees so that's gonna be pumping when i say soft start some air cons will just like go berserk when you turn them on this one is starting up at 7.3 amps. It's sucking out of the batteries. And as you'll see this ramp up and it slowly ramps up and it's gonna end up at about 115 amps, something like that. It's running off my lithium battery, which is sitting at 13 volts. All right, take a bit of a back step. I first 
put this lithium. It's a two kilowatt Phoenix from Victron. Bloody awesome piece of kit. It's all like has apps to go with all my other Victron apps. See, it's doing 30-ish amps now. Initially, I connected it up to these two AGM batteries, 100 amp hour AGM. They're good quality. They're like 500 bucks each, but it punished them. And when we're talking batteries and current and volts, there's a relationship between volts and current. The less voltage you have, the more current is required. So like this battery, say it starts at 13 and a half amp, uh, volts, then I turn the inverter on, it punishes it and it drops it down to 12 and a half volts. That means the current has to be that much more to get going. And there's a quick, like basically watt power, amps, um, current I, and um, V for volt. There's a relationship between the three of them. If you want to know, work, want to work it out, get your calculator, 2000 watts divided by 12 volt gives you X. 2000 watts divided by 13 or 14 volts gives you a lot less current draw. And AGMs just run on lower voltages, therefore they need more current. And when you put a massive inverter on there, it smashes them. So, um, all right, let's have a look what it's doing now. I'm gonna flip it around. Straight up, we're up to 60 amps and climbing and it's running off of this battery. This is a 100 amp hour lithium and it's even still it's on 12.8, so it's, it, it's hurting. The story goes, I put it up to these AGMs, it worked for about an hour and then it just crushed them. Didn't work at all. Um, I was at, at the point where I was gonna destroy a battery. <sighs> Didn't know what to do, so then I put the lithium in and now this is dedicated to run off the lithium. The lithium, 100 amp power, runs the Victron, which runs the aircon, independently of the two 100 amp power AGMs that run the rest of the 12 volt supply of the caravan. That's kind of how it's all worked out. So this has all been running for a while now, and it's just sort of hovering about 54 amps out of the battery which is kind of doable but the room was already chilled down because we had it running off 240 for a bit if this was during the day for example i know the panel on my car it pumps out 19 amps or so so that means i could get a decent amount of charge from my start battery lithium start battery in the car back to this lithium to help it along so let's say by the time it gets back here, that 19 will probably turn into 15. At the same time, I've got a 200 watt solar panel, which I can bolt in, that gives me another 10 amps. So let's say that 10 turns into six or seven. So yeah, I'm still gonna be able to pump a decent amount of charge into this. The lithium is still gonna get punished, but I reckon, well, yesterday I ran this for, I don't know, maybe four or five hours, something like that. And that was enough. So when the kids came to bed, um, the caravan was chilled down for them. It wasn't too hot. So lithium, can't do it without lithium. That's the learning of this. Uh, choose how you run the aircon. I just ran it at like 25 degrees on low fan. And that was enough to sort of chill it down. Get all the solar in that you can. And I found yesterday, everything was charged to the max and it worked really well. Today, it's not working as well because I think it takes a little while for these batteries to come back up to fully charged again. So it's kind of like um, it would work a day off grid, but to do it properly, you need more lithium, more solar. I'm still pretty stoked that in emergencies, I can put this on, even while I'm just setting up camp and need to get the kids to bed just to cool down a little bit, I'm happy. Anyway. Signing off for today. Uh, tomorrow we've got another big day. We're going to try and get to Queensland. Uh, we're meeting up with another Y62, or should be, that is supercharged stage two off at Nana. Um, so that'll be good. Catch up with them. 
and um, yeah, the vlogs keep coming. I'm going to do a, a detailed sort of rundown of Ilya's Dirty 62. If you've got any questions about that car, ask me in this thread, um, in YouTube thread, and I will um, try and answer them when I get there. Whatever I can't answer, in a few days we're meeting up with Andrew Kasser who built the car, and I'll ask him on camera too. He doesn't know that yet. <laughs> All right, signing off. I'll see you again on YouTube. Yeah, yeah.